Echocardiographic contrast is done as part of a complete echocardiographic study. Agitated saline contrast is used to opacify the right heart and diagnose a right to left intracardiac shunt through an atrial septal defect or patent foramen ovale. First, we will demonstrate a saline contrast study. Needed equipment includes a three way stopcock, five 10 milliliter syringes filled with 0.9% saline solution, and one empty 10 milliliter syringe. A 20 to 22 gauge intravenous line is placed, typically in the right arm. The larger intravenous line size is recommended to allow a quick bolus injection of saline contrast. A short extension tubing filled with saline is attached and the line is secured with tape. The ECG monitoring electrodes are applied by the sonographer and the patient is placed in the left lateral decubitus position for echocardiographic imaging. Baseline images are obtained and a view is chosen that shows the interatrial septum and the right and left atrium to allow visualization and timing of the appearance of contrast in the left heart. On transthoracic imaging, an apical four-chamber view often is used. A subcostal view may be used if an apical view is not obtainable. A contrast effect is achieved by agitating the saline. Using sterile technique, one of the pre-filled 10 milliliter saline syringes is attached to the three-way stopcock, which is turned off to the patient. Then an empty 10 milliliter syringe holding 0.5 milliliters of air is attached to the third port of the stopcock. Microbubbles are created by quickly and repeatedly pushing the saline air mixture from one syringe into the other. When the agitation is complete, the saline will look opaque, but there are no visible air bubbles. Verbal cues are established between the sonographer and the nurse who will be injecting the saline to ensure a coordinated effort with recording of images starting just before contrast appears in the right heart. When the agitation is complete and on cue from the sonographer, the stopcock is turned off to the empty syringe and the bolus is injected into the patient. Echo images are recorded in 6 to 8 beat loops to ensure the entire contrast sequence is captured. The saline contrast opacifies the right heart with the contrast entering the right atrium from the superior vena cava. If there is no intracardiac shunt, the right atrium is densely opacified and the left atrium shows no contrast microbubbles. In the parasternal short axis view, contrast in the right heart may obscure visualization of contrast in the left heart. In the presence of a right to left intracardiac shunt, microbubbles are seen in the left atrium and left ventricle within two or three beats of the appearance contrast in the right heart, as seen in the apical four chamber view in the same patient. On transthoracic imaging, a minimum of five contrast injections is recommended, three at rest during normal respirations, and two following a Valsalva maneuver. The Valsalva release phase transiently increases right atrial pressure, which may demonstrate a right-to-left shunt that was not visible during normal respiration as seen in this example. When an atrial septal defect is present, a large number of microbubbles are seen in the left heart. In addition, a negative contrast jet also may be seen due to unopacified blood from the left atrium crossing the defect from left to right. Notice the right ventricular and right atrial enlargement in this patient with a secundum ASD. With transesophageal imaging, a high esophageal view of the interatrial septum at about 60 degrees rotation shows the fossa ovalis, the location of a patent foramen ovale, and both atria. This example shows contrast filling the right atrium with intermittent passage of a few microbubbles across a patent foramen ovale into the left atrium.
In some patients, a small amount of contrast passes through the lungs and is seen in the left heart several beats after the appearance of contrast in the right heart. This late contrast is seen in normal individuals, but may be more prominent in patients with a pulmonary atriovenous fistula. The study is complete. The IV is removed and the patient is dismissed once the complete echocardiographic study is done. Transpulmonary contrast is done as part of a complete transthoracic echocardiographic study. Echocardiographic contrast agents use microbubbles small enough to traverse the pulmonary capillary bed to provide opacification of the left ventricle. The most common indication for use of left-sided contrast is to improve visualization of left ventricular global and regional systolic function. The procedure for activating the microbubble contrast agent may vary by manufacturer. Here we use Definity Contrast, which is a single-use vial with 1.5 milliliters of contrast, which is activated via a specific mixer. The contrast vial is placed on the agitator device and agitated for the time specified by the manufacturer. The amount of saline in the syringe is adjusted to 8.5 milliliters, and the included device for withdrawing the contrast from the vial is used to add the contrast to the saline-filled syringe. The opaque contrast agent is now ready for intravenous injection in increments as needed to achieve a contrast effect. A 20 to 22 gauge intravenous line is placed, typically in the right arm, and a short extension tubing filled with saline is attached and the line is secured with tape. The ECG monitoring electrodes are applied by the sonographer, and the patient is placed in the left lateral decubitus position for echocardiographic imaging. Baseline images are obtained. Contrast opacification of the left ventricle is recommended if two or more myocardial segments are not adequately visualized. Contrast is frequently used during exercise or dobutamine stress imaging to improve identification of regional wall motion abnormalities. Instrument settings are adjusted for visualization of contrast. The power output is decreased until the mechanical index is about 0.6. Transducer frequency is reduced to the lowest value, and then overall gain and dynamic range are increased. Focal depth is set in the midfield of the image. Typically, images are recorded in standard views of the left ventricle, the four-chamber view as already shown. The two-chamber view shown here before and after contrast enhancement and in long-axis and short-axis views. Timing of the contrast injection is coordinated between the nurse doing the injection and the sonographer. About 0.4 milliliters of contrast is injected at a rate of 0.1 milliliters per second. The amount and rate of injection should completely opacify the left ventricle without swirling of contrast, as shown in this example with contrast injected too slowly or at too low a dose. When contrast is injected too quickly or at too high a dose, dense contrast in the apex shadows the rest of the ventricle. This effect usually clears in a few beats, allowing recording of contrast images that show the entire LV. Contrast also can be helpful in diagnosis of apical left ventricular thrombus. The baseline images in this example show four-chamber dilation with severe left and right ventricular systolic dysfunction. A close-up view of the left ventricular apex shows hypokinesis but no definite thrombus. However, when the left ventricular chamber is opacified with contrast, there is an area along the apical inferior wall suggestive of thrombus. When the study is complete, the IV is removed, and the patient is dismissed once the complete echocardiographic study is done.